Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Um, today I'm going to show you a clever trick that can make your Psytrance mixes, or any genre you play actually, um, more DJ friendly. Uh, the trick is all about improving your transitions between tracks so they flow better and feel more natural. Uh, something that I think is crucial to keep the energy up on the dance floor. Uh, and also, it's a small detail that you can actually change in how you arrange track in order to get the full power of this uh, technique, uh, basically. So let's just dive directly into a software called Recordbox. So those of you who never used Recordbox before or doesn't know what it is, it's a uh, software that lets you um, control CDJs if you have a license. Or you can use a free version, which basically acts as a playlist preparation uh, software. So you build basically playlists and you prepare your track lists or playlists within Recordbox. And then you can export that into a USB flash drive and the Pioneer or Alpha Theta CDJs will basically... Um, display that information for you. So you get like the waveform display and the players and uh, you can see the, the, the cues that you set up, etc. cetera. Um, so before we get into the actual trick that I'm talking, that I'm going to explain, um, we have to talk about two important tools in Recordbox and that is hot cues and memory cues. Both will help you mark and jump to specific points in a track, but they have different functions. So hot cues uh, are perfect for live mixing because they let you instantly jump to a specific point in the track. And when you press the hot cue button on a player, the hot cues activate immediately, acting as like some kind of re-trigger, um, making them ideal when you want to loop, sample, or just jump to a part of the track quickly during a set. Memory cues, however, are more for making key points in the track as reference points. So they allow you to quickly navigate to those points via record box or a CDJ, but they aren't really meant for immediate activation. Uh, memory cues are great for making transition points and the player will even count down the bars for you so you know exactly when a drop or important moment is coming. Um, so just to summarize, hot cues are there for quick live mixing, while memory cues are more for planning ahead and navigating through the track that you're going to play. So to demonstrate this, let's have an example of a hot cue. So a hot cue could preferably be placed in the beginning of a track like this. And I press A over here. So we have hot cue A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H in this example. And then maybe I have a hot cue further down the line in the track. So maybe I go over here. And then I have hot cue B. If I right click, I can set another color on this. So notice that I have something called bars over here. So for you record box users, if you don't have this, I recommend going into file preferences and then scroll down to on view and then change to countdown to the next memory queue in bars. I think standard is current position. So now it says I'm at bar 57, but that doesn't really make any sense. We want to have the countdown because we want the software to work for us, not against us. <laughs> um, so let's just close this for a second. And notice that it doesn't really count down to our queues. So I don't get any readout over here. However, if I press A, it starts playing immediately. So I've seen a lot of like hip hop DJs, R&B DJs or multi-genre DJs use hot cues in order to like play different melodies or like do some kind of weird live remixing by like drumming on the hot cue buttons on the player. Um, I don't really do that. I just let the track play. So I don't find them that useful for Psytrance <laughs> in my honest opinion, uh, at least in not the way that I mix. Um, I've been playing for like over 10 years now and I've never really used hot cues 
um, before. However, I do like memory cues. And the reason why is, just to example, like what I mean that they don't stop our playing. So if this is a memory cue. So to, to place a memory cue, let's press a memory cue over here. I press memory and I get a memory cue over here. So it's like a visual, visual cue. Like, okay, this is an important moment in the track. So if I start over here, it doesn't start playing. However, when I move close, when I get close to the to the memory queue over here that I placed, it starts counting the bars before I reach my important moment in the track. Um, so now that we covered that, let's move on on how we can improve our transition between tracks. So a track is usually made up of musical phrases, often 16, be 16 bars long in Psytrance and other electronic dance music. Um, but this can vary depending on the genre and artist, of course. Um, so when we DJ, uh, we want our mixes to feel like a natural continuation of the music. So we're not focusing too much of sudden changes because that can interrupt the flow uh, on the dance floor. And... Um, in order to achieve that, we use something called phrase mixing, where we basically take into the music, take into account how the track is structured, and we synchronize two tracks together based on their musical phrases in order to create this smooth, natural transitions where it sounds like a very long track rather than like chopped up individual tracks. If that makes sense. Um, so when you're producing or DJing a track, it's important to, to keep track of these phrases. So if we take a look in Ableton Live, for example, in the arrangement view, you can see that we have these marked out for us. In this particular case, I have it set to eight bars, but we can also have it set to four bars if we want to work in four bar increments or maybe two bar increments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but the point is we still have some kind of structure. So as you can see here, we have in the intro part, it's 16 bars. Then I create another 16 bar uh, track, then I do an eight bar, and then I do another eight bar over here, which is more of like a longer break. And then I reset it back to eight bar, eight bar, and then a 16 bar long phrase, and then 16 bar, and then the last one is also 16 bars. Um, so, Having that said, um, it's important to keep track of these phrases because it will help you create a structure in your track. So it makes it more like, so it kind of makes sense. Um, but sometimes, despite us taking that into account, I've noticed that when mixing two tracks together, the very last phrase of track A, which in this case would be my Title Force track. So I made this kind of mistake if I'm allowed to say that. Um, doesn't perfectly align with the first phrase that I'm going to mix in on track B. And um, let me just like show you what I mean. So I'm going to go over to View in Rekordbox and then I'm going to hit Two Players. So I'm going to mix start so I'm, I'm like this is the first track i will play in a set so i'm going to start playing have it play 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 and then when i reach the very end of the two 16 bar phrases i'm going to transition into track b which is in this case funk buster both of these tracks are not released yet uh, we'll see if and when they get released um but so i'm gonna like at the very end of track a i'm going to start mixing in track b so let's just hear that uh, and see how it sounds. So, as you can see here, they're counting down from the exact same bar over here. And this phrase sounds pretty good.
So between these, between these memory cues is the moment where I'm transitioning into track B. And when I reach the very end over here of these cue points, I want to do a full transition. So now we're basically fully transitioning into track B. Now, like between these cue points, I have like 32 bars to make the transition and it's all fine and all that. And I mean, this transition sounds okay, but the problem is that I found is that on track A over here, and if we compare that to track B, You can see that um, you can see that it, it doesn't always it's, it's not perfect uh, because if it was perfect in my opinion we would have some kind of fill or some kind of break two bars before we reset into a new sixteen bar phrase. So if we look into the arrangement again, you can see that I marked um, two bars of of content over here. Uh, which is this. So in order for this transition to be ideal, according to me, we would have to have a, a transition, like a transition effect on the very last phrase over here. And this is the actual trick that I want to kind of point out is that if you want to make your tracks like even more DJ friendly, um, you could do something like this in your tracks where you basically, just as you do, on your other phrases, which you probably already doing while, while you're not thinking about it really, you see that right before we hit a new 16 bar phrase, you have like some kind of break. If you do the same on the very last phrase of the bar, you will probably ensure that your last phrase of track A will always be a nice, sweet, smooth transition into track B if you do that on the very last phrase. Um, like that's the whole point of this video to show you how you can take that into account and improve your arrangement even further by doing this. Um, so for example, I mean, sure, a DJ's job is maybe like try to work around that, but sometimes we're lazy, uh, and sometimes it's hard to make it really smooth like that. And I do really believe that if you like take these stuff into account, um, you will overall um, become a better DJ and you will overall become a better producer as well, I think. Um, kind of be, it could be kind of formulaic, uh, I suppose, but I don't know. I prefer it this way. I prefer when it's smooth transitions. I don't like sudden changes in tracks. It, it kind of breaks the flow um, on the dance floor. So, um, yeah, um, that's that's basically it. So you could like solve it by having some kind of filter sweep on the last two bars, for, stretching from bar... 14 to 16 in your track um, or you have some kind of thing happening on bar 15 or something just something that makes it aligns a little bit better um, so so that was uh, basically what the video was about i hope you learned something uh, new today and if you it was kind of hard to explain everything uh, so i hope you kind of understand uh, what i'm trying to 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 point out here uh, if you have any questions just leave a comment and I will try and elaborate as good as I can. So yeah, see you in the next one.